Hello Techies! Welcome back to our channel UiPath by Sujita. In this video, I am going to cover the basic concept that is workflows. We have learned about the variables and uh, definition of variable and different ways to create a variable and different properties of a variable, right? So now let's look into the workflows. If you have not gone through the variables part, please go through the video on variables in UiPath through our channel. So now look into workflows in UiPath. Workflows. If you are an advanced developer in UiPath, this might be a very basic concept, but still it will help you in understanding the workflow in depth. Okay. Also, uh, at times during our interviews in UiPath, we may be uh, confused to answer such basic questions, right? So not only with the interview perspective, please try to understand the concept in depth so that you can uh, do your best. Okay, fine. Let us dive into this video. Workflows. Workflows. The name itself gives you the answer. What is workflow in UiPath? Workflows are nothing but a flow which explains the work, right? In, in, real, in real terminology, we can say like a flow which is going to explain about the work to be done. Now, let us see in terms of UiPath what is workflows, okay? Please make a note on the uh, key highlights at least so that it will help you to uh, refer whenever it is needed. So in terms of UiPath, a workflow represents a small piece of automation that you can take and reuse in your projects. So this is going to be a small piece of automation where we can reuse it in our project, in the complete uh, bigger project that means in our entire automation. So why this workflow came? Workflow defines the flow of our automation, right? So that is the that is why the name workflow came, right? It defines the flow of your automation. This flow is going to be reused in the entire project. So what is the use of having a workflow? We, we can define the same workflow in projects, right? We can do, uh, represent uh, the same flow of our work in project and type bigger uh, automation, the global automation. Why to have workflows? What is the benefit in having workflows? Let, me, let us discuss about that. I hope you are clear on this, right? Workflows are nothing but... A small piece of automation that you can take and reuse in your projects. It defines the flow of our automation. Hence the name workflow. Now let us see the benefits of it. Okay. Since that we are telling that it, it can be reusable. So this is going to be one benefit. Reuse in global project. That means we can... We can uh, uh, automate a piece of uh, uh, process and we can integrate in the bigger project, right? We can consider this as component reuse, fine. Now, now the other part is we can test individual components, right? So instead of testing the entire global project, we can test bits and pieces of the process so that we can make sure that this part of this is, suppose we are doing some, performing some actions in a website, login functionality, login for logout functionality or um, navigating to, uh, till to some uh, page or filling a form, all these could be different uh, workflows. So login, uh, say suppose login workflow. So it, it contains some X number of activities where we can test that individual component. That means complete login functionality can be tested and we can keep it as it is so that we can move on to the other functionality and we can test it. So that way we can uh, test individual components. Next, 
let us look into the other one team collaboration because we are dividing this complete global project into different workflows because we are uh, going to use the workflows it can collaborate it can build a team uh, collaboration because we can integrate right at, at last we are going to integrate and uh, that way team collaboration works here fine and the major one and the major one is it is the fastest most reliable and useful way this is going to be the most useful approach when we are uh, going to make this into small pieces like whatever the project it, it is it might not be a bigger very bigger project even for the medium to small projects also when we break into chunks of uh, process so it will make the i mean uh, the development will be faster enough and more reliable because we are testing individual components and the useful way right we are going to reuse whenever it is needed so this way these are the benefits of the workflows so that is why we have to concentrate on workflows when we are automating any process when we are learning an uh, any tool ui path or any other tool for which, which is related to automation it is always advisable to know the basic concepts so that you you will give your best okay so now let us look into the predefined um, workflows which are available in UiPath Studio. Okay, predefined workflow layouts. Let us see what are those. Can anyone guess? Yes. Sequence, flowchart, next, state machines. global handlers right so these are the predefined workflow layouts which are available in our ui path fine so now let us look into these each and every uh, workflows i mean predefined workflows workflows as you can guess sequence sequence is nothing but a smallest type of project right where we can uh, navigate i mean where the flow passes from one activity to another activity in a sequence way. So they are suitable for to linear process. So for example, if you are uh, uh, reading some data from a PDF file or an Excel file and making some operations on top of the data, it is going to be a sequence flow, right? And the same file can be the same automation, that's the smallest uh, uh, project, the same file workflow is going to be reused in the entire project wherever it is needed with a small, a small little changes, right? So that is the benefit of sequence. Uh, it can be reused in a flowchart, state missions and all, right? Right. Now let us go back to the flowchart. Let us move on to the flowchart. So flowchart. So when we are going to have some de de uh, decisions uh, du uh, uh, during the entire uh, automation process, in such scenarios we are going to use flowchart. Let us let us make a note of uh, what this flowchart is. So it has multiple branching logical operators, which enables us to create complex business process. And also we can connect activities in multiple ways because it has the decision branching and all operators are available right in flowchart. So this way we can reuse this uh, flowcharts as a smaller projects in our global projects as well. So let us move on to the other one which is state machine. State machines are nothing but similar kind but, but it will be having multiple states. Okay uses a finite number of states in its execution it can go into a state when it is triggered by an activity and it exits that state when another activity is triggered so we have covered the state, uh, state machines flow charts and sequences in all our uh, other videos right in in depth so on a high level you can understand this as a as, as an automation which uses a finite number of states in its execution 
so also it can uh, trigger uh, i mean it, it will be triggered by an activity and it it can be exited with uh, by, uh, when when another activity is triggered that way you can remember later you can uh, will have a, a real time scenarios as well and before uh, ending up this session i'll show you how this looks like also so you for, for your clear understanding let us move on to the uh, global handlers global handlers Global handlers are nothing but a workflow designed to especially to determine the project's behavior when and uh, when during the exceptions action. So when it encounters when the process automation encounters any execution error in such scenario where when when we have not uh, uh, what to say ca uh, cached or when we have not handled the exception using try catch or throw something like that. Global handlers comes into picture so there will be only one global handler uh, global exception handler per one automation okay fine for for one uh, project okay so now let us just quickly open our uh, studio and if you uh, see in the new here at left side top corner we have many things workflows right predefined workflows sequence flowchart then state machine and global handler and if you see the pictures also represents how it behaves how it gets executed if you, if you see the sequence it is going one after one so executor will be working one activity next it will be moving to other activity whereas the flowchart as we learned flowchart will be having logical operators logical branches in order to accommodate business scenarios uh, uh, i mean complex business scenarios so if you see here based on the first activity it will decide and it will traverse through it will it will go according to the logic right it will move according to the logic whereas the state machine it has different states it will move from one state to other state one activity uh, because of one activity one state may trigger so that way it will work whereas the global handler in the entire project if an exception comes and uh, uh, during the execution of any automation which is not uh, handled by code it will be thrown to the global handler so this way you you can just understand using the icons itself right if, if you just see uh, see the sequence i'm I am creating a sequence example so if you see the by default the sequence has nothing right so let us move on to the flow chart let me let me add the sequence so that you can understand more see it whatever activities we add here all those will be in a sequential way right in a sequential way so the executor will move from one to another activity let me have one flow chart flow chart example okay so it is starting from one node whereas when i take some activity based on this we can move we, we can uh, what to say add some logical branches here right so you could see the different uh, see here on on just mouse over to this we, we can see one line something like that let me show you for example so this is one and let me have one more sequence to this where i can uh, I, I can add a branching from this to this so for example I can add some decision uh, operator flow decision later what what I'm going to do is I can just move on to one sequence or type into where I'm going to add it here and then I can take a screenshot so many logical operators logical branches can be added okay so this is because it has true or false so this way the flowchart looks like.
right based on the law i mean we can implement law, complex logical operations complex business uh, logics using flowcharts which can be reused in the global project as well okay now let us move on to the state machine it, it will be having uh, different states okay so let me say example okay so it, it is starting whereas it, it we we can have multiple state in states in it okay so i'm going to use one state and it will be having some uh, entry and exit activities so the same way uh, we we can have some final uh, state as well so multiple states so the executor will will be uh, going i mean uh, triggering a state based on the entry activity and exit based on the exit activity and many trans transitions will be there uh, between one state to another so it it is a different concept where we can learn a lot and we need to uh, go in depth uh, through this kind of workflows and all we have already covered few videos on this if you would really uh, want to go through them please try to have uh, those videos and get some knowledge on this workflows separately so on a high level this is how it looks like i'm just concentrating on the beginners so instead of uh, learning uh, with a complete imagination let us just uh, see this open your studio and just understand how it looks like at least okay so now next global handler let us create this global handler and see it has a predefined one where it is going to uh, retry if an ex uh, exception occurs and then how it should behave whether it should uh, retry or it should abort or all these kind of actions can be edited here okay so these are the different workflows predefined workflows which are available in uipath studio and we a quick recap we have learned what is a workflow and how it is going to be useful if we use uh, workflow in our projects in uipath especially and we have seen different predefined workflow layouts in uipath okay so i hope you got a clear understanding a basic uh, knowledge on the workflow part if you are a beginner so uh, if you like this video please give a like and share with your friends and colleagues and please do subscribe our channel for more videos click on the bell icon so meet you through our next videos until then happy learning happy automating bye bye